You're watching the community MMA. What up? What up? This your boy Chris Cross checking in. Yes, this is the community MMA. We got some important topics today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching here on YouTube. And we want to welcome all the listeners on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, everywhere you are hearing today's podcast because it's an important topic. Make no mistake about it. It's an important topic. We're looking at Hamza Chamayev and Israel Adesanya. And if things go our way, uh, we'll coordinate that at the end when we get into these two predictions. And we'll let you know what the future holds in a potential Hamza versus Adesanya matchup. And it's very real. But they both got to win. And that's the big question. Now, let's begin with Hamza Chamayev. This guy is what I like to call a UFC bully. Now, I don't like to throw that word around lightly. Of course, it's a major problem in our country, bullying, right? Um, and usually someone's picking on someone else, etc. But in terms of the UFC, you're dealing with professionals. So when we say UFC bully, we're talking about a guy that just goes in and beats people uh, down and does it uh, aggressively in short order. And now that he's moving back to middleweight, this is his ideal weight class. This is what you need to understand. This is Hamza's ideal weight class. Welterweight, he's squeezing down. He's weak. That's why he struggled against Gilbert Burns a little bit. If he ever goes to light heavyweight, that's going to be a struggle because now you're dealing with bigger guys. Although I think he could eventually win that title hands down. But I'm trying to make the point here that middleweight is the perfect division. And you all are going to see this um, in this next fight against Paulo Costa. And he's going to get in there and just manhandle Paulo Costa. I mean, it's just going to happen. Maybe it goes into the second, third round. Very unlikely is th that this thing gets to the fourth or fifth. And what I'm really interested in is seeing how Hamza approaches this fight. Is he going to try to take down Paulo Costa? Or is he going to go in there and just try to light him up, if you will? And we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. But before we go forward... On this topic, let's get into the prediction and full preview first. In the middleweight division at UFC 294, this is your co-main event. You got Paulo Costa, the Brazilian, coming in at 14 and 2, taking on. You're not going to believe this. Hamza Chamayev coming in undefeated 12 and 0, and it's about time. The speculation is over, and we have a big fight in Abu Dhabi. This is a big fight. Hamza, one inch taller at 6'2". He's 29, still in his 20s. Paulo Costa, 32. Both guys in their prime. Hamza, three inch reach advantage. Both guys stand right-handed. Both guys very active. Hamza, 7.3 significant strikes per minute to 6.5 for Paulo Costa. Now, when you get into the takedown game, Hamza, four takedowns over the course of three rounds, so over one per round. Paulo Costa, uh, nearly, uh, or... Not even close to one over the course of three rounds. He lands one once every six rounds. So not very good there for Costa. But he does have good takedown defense, 79%. That allows him to play into the striking. Against Luke Rockhold, he won by decision his last fight. He did lose to Marvin Vittori and Israel Adesanya. Before that, he beat Yoel Romero, Uriah Hall, Johnny Hendricks. And a Luke Rockhold win was a big one. But that's his biggest win of his career. Hamza. Beat Kevin Holland in his last fight by submission. Two minutes and 13 seconds in, he beat Gilbert Burns. He beat Lee Jingliang, Gerald Mearshart, John Phillips. And you can continue going back. And you got a one by almost every fight. First round, except Gilbert Burns was in the third. And John Phillips took him into the second. But it was 43-1. to one, And John Phillips was the only guy to land one strike on him in his first four fights. So Hamza is ridiculous. And you know here on the community MMA, he's number one. On our do list. So it's very difficult for me to go against Hamza. It's just not going to happen. I think he beats anyone on the planet. Welterweight, middleweight, and potentially even light heavyweight later in the career. He should win this fight. He will win this fight. But most importantly, uh, I'd like to see him dominate in this fight. In my opinion, Hamza wins this fight uh, likely on the feet. I mean, Paulo Costa does have good takedown defense. He's a big guy. It's like it's going to be like the Gilbert Burns fight for Hamza because it's a big step up and he's got to get past all the question marks and things like that. Although he has no question marks, but in terms of the fans and the hype. So this is going to be like the Gilbert Burns fight. The difference is, is that 
he's not going to be depleted in weight. It's right at the weight he wants to be. And uh, regardless of what things look like with Paulo Cosa coming at Hamza behind the scenes, things like that, Hamza should mop the floor with this guy. Again, in my opinion, he'll move to 13-0, middleweight division, UFC 294. Yeah, so that's the first one. Okay, so already what we're predicting, and of course it's always in our opinion, but that Hamza beats Paulo Costa and beats him soundly. This is not going to be like Gilbert Burns where he's squeezing into weight and he's depleted and all these things. He's leaving that behind him. Now he's going up where he's going to feel strong. Maybe he's got to cut four or five pounds, but he's naturally like 190, 195. Cutting down to 185, no big deal. 170, much harder. So look for a reju rejuvenated Hamza, much like the fight against Kevin Holland. Of course, Paulo's going to be, you know, more solid and well-rounded than Kevin Holland. Stronger, but I don't think that matters. Then we move forward to Israel Adesanya versus Sean Strickland. This is a big opportunity for Sean Strickland. Can he get the win? Of course he can. But Adesanya is the true champion. He came back and beat Alex Pereira to get the belt. Drake is duplex. He did not want the fight. Major mistake. And Adesanya is already saying if he can win this, he might move past Duplessis and go right to Hamza, which is a huge statement and uh, well accepted among the uh, Hamza Chamayev community, if you will. But here is Israel Adesanya for Sean Strickland. In the middleweight division for the middleweight division title at UFC 293 in Sydney, Australia, you got Israel Adesanya coming in at 24 and 2. Ridiculous. Taking on Sean Strickland, who comes in at 27 and 5. The American gets the opportunity. I guess Drake is Duplessis. Drake is Duplessis. He doesn't want it. Now, Adesanya, three inches taller at 6. Four. He's 34. Sean Strickland, 32. Adesanya has a four-inch reach advantage. He's a switch hands fighter, which always makes him uh, tough to beat. Obviously, he's 24 and 2. Strickland fights right-handed. Activity goes to Sean Strickland. 5.9 significant strikes per minute. Adesanya, four significant strikes per minute. Now, in terms of the takedown game, Adesanya, non-existent. Sean Strickland likes to get a takedown, uh, you know, maybe one takedown over the course of three rounds. Now, the last style bender, a.k.a. Israel Adesanya, 77% takedown defense. Pretty solid there. He's coming off the win for the first time over Alex Pajeda by KO. Before that, Pajeda KO'd him in the fifth round. So a good back-to-back -back, uh, fights there for the title where it exchanged hands and it went back to Adesanya. And you don't see that every day when a champ gets beat that he comes back and gets a title. Before that, he'd be Jerry Cannonier, Robert Whitaker, Marvin Vittori. Now, on the other hand, Sean Strickland, 84% takedown defense. That won't matter. Coming off the win, nice win over Abu Magomedov recently, right? July 1st. So just uh, a month ago, he beat him by KO in the second round. Before that, he beat uh, Mavov by decision and lost to Jared Cannonier by split decision. See, that's a problem. In a great fight, though, Strickland outstruck him, 152 to 141, had a takedown. Uh, he also lost to Alex Pajeda by KO. So, what it comes down to is many people don't think Sean Strickland has a chance. I tend to believe he does have a chance here because he's very active, right? It's not going to be a fight where he doesn't land 100, 100 plus significant strikes if it goes five rounds. He's going to be very active, which could present a problem for Adesanya. But Adesanya has the best uh, significant strike defense that you'll ever see because he switches stance. He keeps the head off the center line. He moves around. And really, for those reasons, and obviously he's twenty-one and or twenty-four and two, he's over a four-to-one favorite. I don't think it should be that high because Sean Strickland is going to present some problems in this fight. Please believe it. But Israel Adesanya uh, should also cruise to victory in the championship rounds. I think this does go to a decision. I mean, maybe Adesanya gets the KO. He's going to be pumped up after the Pajeda fight, but he's also going to be careful in this fight because this is one like when you know you should win. Uh, you're worried about losing type of thing. But I see Adesanya winning, getting his 25th victory, retaining the belt, and doing so uh, by dominant unanimous decision, like at least three, actually four to one, right? 49-46 uh, on all three judges' scorecards. Maybe there's a 48-47 in there. But Adesanya will win, in my opinion, retain the middleweight title here at UFC 293. Yeah, so 
If this thing gets into the third round, Adesanya's chances of victory continue to skyrocket minute by minute at that point. The first two rounds is where Strickland has a shot. But he's flat-footed. He's going to have to, you know, move a lot and continue to chase Adesanya, who's going to dance around and just pick him apart. I mean, and that's how Adesanya is going to win this fight. As long as he's careful and doesn't get hit with that big strike, which Adesanya is the best at avoiding. You know, even when Alex Pereira beat him, it was just overwhelming force in the fifth round that he couldn't escape from. I don't see that from Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland's trying to get you to stop moving and then land a big shot. And Adesanya moves from beginning to end. So in our opinion, both Hamza and Adesanya win. And then it comes down to, will they fight each other? Well, if they do, let's let's look at the matchup. You got Hamza land 7.3 significant strikes per minute to Adesanya's four per minute. Hamza has the advantage there. Takedown game, Adesanya four takedowns on average in a three-round fight. That's more than one per round. Adesanya, zero, basically. <laughs> 0.06. I think he's landed one or two takedowns in his career. Adesanya's takedown defense, 77%. That'll be broken. Hamza, 100%. So Adesanya is not taking down Hamza, and Hamza is likely to take down Adesanya. And that's how I think this fight will play out, is Hamza would just have... Uh, overwhelming uh, ability and strength advantage over Adesanya to be able to take him down and control him, which no other opponent on the planet can do. And I think Hamza could take the punches, right, on his way in. So Hamza is very likely to take him down. Now against Kevin Holland, two takedowns. Against Gilbert Burns, two takedowns to zero. Against Lee Jingliang, one takedown, ended the fight. Against Gerald Mearshart, uh, no takedowns, but that fight ended in 17 seconds. And they say, oh, yeah, middleweight, just Gerald Mearshart. Yeah, but Mearshart came back and won like four of the next five, at least three of the next four. So imagine what Hamza would do to those opponents who Gerald beat in the next five fights. Beat Rice McGee by KO, 40 to nothing in significant strikes. John Phillips, 43 to one in significant strikes. And every fight he's had a takedown except against Mearshart because he beat him in 17 seconds and hasn't given up any takedowns in three, uh, six fights. That means she's just dominating his opponent uh, or opponents, and it takes you back to the title of this podcast. He's just dominating people. And although I love the last style bender, I think that that fight goes in a similar manner. And then when you're looking at our dude list, right, you got Hamza number one and Adesanya number five. So Adesanya is no slouch, but some of you question that Hamza is over John Jones, you know, and that's the, for the future. Right? He's my favorite fighter because I just don't think he's going to lose to anybody. Anybody. To me, Hamza is the GOAT. Hamza is the GOAT. And he's just going to continue dominating people, especially in the middleweight and light heavyweight division. As he goes up in weight, he goes up in strength. Could he ever go back and get to welterweight? By that time, he's going to be older. A lot harder to squeeze into that weight. He could do it once to win the belt, you know, and make himself a three belt champion. But that's risking a lot with your health and things like that, especially if you get the light heavyweight first. And some of you think I'm crazy. You're like, light heavyweight? What are you talking? I'm telling you now for a reason. So that when it happens, I can come back and play this and say, see what I'm, I told you from the beginning, what's going to happen? And you Hamza fans will weigh in. Let them know. I'm not the only one, man. I'm not the only one that thinks this way. There's a lot of us out there to, believe that Hamza is going to dominate everybody. And you're going to see that beginning with Costa. And then when he dominates Costa, you're going to hear, oh, Costa lost to Adesanya. He lost to this guy, that guy. He's washed up. Fine. But then we just move forward to the next fight. Even if it is again, if it's against Drake, it's Duplessis. That's the ultimate fight right there because Duplessis to me is a potential champion. He's just in, in no man's land waiting. You understand what I'm saying? If he beats Duplessis, uh, he's going to be unstoppable after that. But remember, you heard it here first. Nice short podcast today. This is your boy, Chris Cross. This is the Community MMA.